Hello and welcome to the UFC conference call. As a reminder, today's conference is being recorded. At this time, for opening remarks and introductions, I would like to turn the conference over to Dave Schaller. Please go ahead. Thanks, Robert. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC on Fox Media Conference Call. UFC on Fox takes place live on Saturday, December 8th from the sold-out Cheer in The fight airs live on Fox at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. The preliminary fights will air live on FX beginning at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, and fans can also catch Friday's weigh-in live on Fuel TV at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. At the end of today's call, I'll run through the schedule of fight week activities in Seattle. And just a quick reminder, tickets are on sale for our next box event in Chicago on January 26th. They go on sale this Friday. And UFC 156, which is Super Bowl weekend here in Vegas, that's also on sale this Friday. Today's media call is going to feature Ben Henderson, the UFC lightweight champion, challenger Nate Diaz, uh, former two-division UFC champion BJ Penn, and rising welterweight star Roy McDonald. Also on the call will be UFC president Dana White, and joining us shortly will be Fox Sports Media Group president Eric Shanks. At this time, we'll turn it over to Dana. Good morning, everybody. So our release, we're trying to track down uh, Shogun and, and Gustafson, so they'll pop in here at, at, at any moment, we hope. Who's got the first question? Um, it's been said that uh, you had uh, expressed the interest in fighting Rory McDonald. Can you tell us uh, what convinced you to come back to fighting after you seem to have uh, called it quits in the cage? And, and, and why was McDonald the opponent you wanted? I, uh, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, <clears throat> I was just uh, kind of hanging out. Uh, it started to that I wanted to fight again. Uh, and better than, you know, better than staying home, sitting on the couch, and I, I realize I can't do this forever, so I, I might as well make the most of it I can. And uh, as far as uh, fighting with uh, fighting with Rory, I think he's a great opponent. Uh, he's an up-and-comer. He's one of the top guys. Uh, everybody said he's going to be a champion soon, so, you know, uh, and, ending up uh, fighting with somebody like Rory, you know, it, it wasn't a, a big, uh, a tough decision. And, and, and I've said in a couple other interviews, you know, I have I'd like to um, uh, have a, uh, uh, a, a fight with a tri team TriStar again. You know, they're a great team. Uh, they've, you know, they've, they've got a lot of champions in, in their club. And I just I just think it's a great fight all around. And if I could just follow up, BJ, there was a Twitter exchange between you and Rory where you responded to a picture of him and you made reference to acne on his back. You've asked him to take the random drug test. Do you feel that he's doing something he shouldn't? I, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and uh, get into that with, uh, with, with, uh, with, with everybody right now. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm sure there are people in, in all sports that uh, bend the rules, but uh, I'm not going to sit here and point the finger. But as, as far as the, um, the, the doping and, and, and that's concerned, you know, I, I just, this is, I, I realize that, it, that it's, it's a painstaking thing for the UFC, and, and I, I don't want to put them through that. You know, uh, they, they've got their own way that uh, they take care of their things. But uh, I, I just I wanted to do the, if I was going to make a comeback, I want to make it as safe as I can for uh, when I step in the ring. And, and that's all that this was about. I'm not pointing the finger. I'm not saying, Rory, you do steroids or anything like that. You know, it has nothing to do with any of that. I'm just uh, protecting my own butt. Okay, thank you. Hey, everyone. Eric Shanks is on the line. Hey, Eric. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Okay, and we will now go to our next question that comes from Mark Rich Scooty of Dallas Morning News. Hi, right, Dana. Uh, can you give us an update on the uh, St. Pierre Silva fight that you're trying to put together and, and what roadblocks remain in choosing a venue, most, uh, especially here in Dallas, uh, Fort Worth? They're excited to hear about the details. Uh, I don't have any details on that yet. I don't have any details on, on GSP Anderson Silva. Have you talked to any of uh, the venues about hosting a, a big fight? And when? how early do you have to plan an event like that for a venue? George St. Pierre went on vacation. I, he hasn't even been back yet from vacation after the fight, so we haven't even talked to him. I haven't talked to anybody yet. And we will go to our next question now. That comes from A.G. Perez of FoxSports.com. It's for Dana. Um, I, I think you have a lot of uh, the Ultimate Fighter um, uh, 
uh, alumni in this uh, this uh, in, in, in this fight right here. Is there? Uh, we know. Can you talk a little about just how? If this, this is what you expected, it's kind of you know, having kind of the whole you know grouping these guys up here and then having having to take over and you know, highlight these fights. Well, no, I mean that's, that's how it works. The, you know, the guys come up to the ultimate fighter. Um, if you look at a guy like Nate Diaz, who's fighting for the title, he has fought. I mean, he's been fighting for years. He's fought everybody. He's on a three-fight win streak. He beat Gomi, Cerrone, Miller. Um, yeah, you know, the, the guys that come off the Ultimate Fighter, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's our Triple A introduce uh, the fans to these up-and-coming guys. But Diaz and Swick and a lot of the guys that are on this card have been around for a long time. Even Matt Brown. <laughs> Cool, thanks. Yep. And we will go next to Dave Dybert of Post Media News. Hi, uh, thanks for the call, guys. Uh, this is for Eric and Dana. Uh, there have been, um, I guess, more reports uh, recently uh, about a uh, Fox Sports 1 uh, getting closer to becoming reality. Um, potentially, uh, how much... Uh, of a factor uh, would the UCSC broadcasting uh, be on a channel like that and uh, they're in one of their recent reports it's in August I think was a timeline uh, for launch uh, is that report accurate I guess that would Eric. probably be for Eric yeah that's an Eric question yeah. uh, well I, you know the same question kind of gets the same answer from us uh, you know we're not you know we're not looking to announce uh, anything today or in the near future, um, and then, you know we continue to look at options. Uh, we have a lot of great uh, network properties, um, but regardless of, of what you know individual channels are called, um, you know the UFC uh, the plans are. You know, and we talked to Dana and Lorenzo. Uh, you know, while we were setting up this deal, the UFC is going to play a huge role both on. Uh, the broadcast network uh, and national cable uh, with Fox and Fox Sports coming forward. So no matter what the channel configurations look like within the Fox Sports media group, the UFC is going to play a bigger and bigger role um, as time goes on. Yeah. Um, is, uh, Dana, you would, uh, you know, after... Um after Montreal, you would uh, you would intimate it perhaps that uh, um, bigger things. I forget how you worded it, but bigger, longer things might be coming to Fox. Uh, I, said, I said we're working we're working on a lot of new things right now. We're we're going to shake up the industry again, just like we have you know over the last 13 years with all the new stuff we're working on. And we've been out, you know, I, you know, we've been in network deals. I've been talking to networks forever. Uh, these are the guys I want to be with. These are the guys I want to be with forever. All right. Uh, thanks so much, you guys. That's very sweet, man. <laughs> <laughs> and we will take our next question from David Martin of MMAWeekly.com. Uh, first question is for uh, Vincent Henderson. Uh, Vincent, obviously, two title defenses in. You've had a lot of questions about the, the way you beat Frank Yeager and those fights in particular. Do you feel like there's a certain statement you need to make in a fight with Nate Diaz to really be dominant or go out and finish a guy like this to kind of solidify your place as champion? Uh, well, I think uh, the, the first two Frank fights, the first one was close. And everyone was hoping that the second one wouldn't be as close, be more decisive. But, you know, sadly, the, the second one was even closer than the first one. Uh, it is what it is. Um, but as far as, you know, me uh, facing Nate and how I got to win against Nate, I'm just trying to get a W. I'm trying to get my hand raised. However, you know, however I can get it. He slips on banana peel, I'll take it. Um, you know, if, if it's a decisive victory, I'll take it. If it's a, a closer uh, razor thin decision, uh, even closer than the second Frankie fight, I'll take that too, you know. Uh, getting a W is not easy to come by in the UFC going against, you know, the best guys literally on the planet. Uh, I'll, I'll take any way I can get it. Uh, that being said, you know, I always fight, you know, uh, I think all, all the fighters on the line, we all fight to, to end fights and to be the decisive as possible. But sometimes, you know, when you're fighting the best guys on the planet, you just can't can't make it as easy that you can't make it super decisive as the guys you're fighting to be kind of offensive, I think, if I just said, oh, yeah, we're going there, we're going to knock out Nate Diaz, no problem. Like, no, I'm not going to say that. Nate Diaz is tough. He's, he's darn tough. And, uh, 
you know, I'm going to go out there and do my best and try and get my head raised any way anyway possible. Uh, but we all like to, uh, in fact, we all like to put guys away. Uh, that being said, the other guy doesn't exactly let it sometimes. And a uh, question for, for BJ Pitt. BJ, you talked about, you know, why you came back and, and the reason for, you know, making your return. But do you have any long-term goals? Is it all based on this fight and then you'll kind of see the future after that? Because I know you've always been a guy that kind of takes things one fight at a time. Is it the same approach with this one? Or, or do you feel like, you know, you've kind of got long-term plans for more than just this fight? Yeah, you know, I, um, I'm i just I'm just focusing on this fight. I got, I got no more plans uh, after this. Uh, and uh, once I do have any plan, I'll, I'll call Dean and, and then we'll talk from that point. But I, I got no plans after December 8th. My whole, my whole life is just into that. And, and one question for Dana and maybe Eric Shanks as well. This fight was the first uh, title fight that you put on the UFC on Fox card since the original show. Uh, and, you're doing, and you're doing that again with the John Dodson, uh, Demetrius Johnson. Was that a strategic idea? I mean, did the, the idea of putting more title fights on Fox or was this just the way things worked out? Or how did that come about? The strategic idea is to put the best fights we could possibly put on Fox, you know. Um, you guys know what the last year and a half has been like. It's, it's, tough, it's tough to keep a card together. Uh, what do we got, like a week and a half to go? I want to say to all the guys on the, on the, on the uh, phone, tone your training down a little bit. Let's not get anybody injured this last week and a half. But the, it's always our intention to put on the best fights on Fox, on pay-per-view, on FX, on Fuel. I mean, we're always trying to put on the best fights we could possibly do. As far as title fights, um, yeah, that, this is the way it lined up. And then the same thing with the uh, Johnson fight. I've always believed that, you know, you showcase these guys on, well, at the end of the day, we're a pay-per-view company. You showcase these guys on free television. And, uh, you know, it, it helps build the sport. It helps... Uh, build these fighters and their, their, who they are, their background, which, by the way, we have uh, road to the Octagon uh, this Sunday after the NFL on Fox, and it basically tells the stories of uh, Ben Henderson, Nate Diaz, Shogun, Gustafson, DJ Penn, and Roy McDonald. So after the NFL this Sunday, road to the Octagon on Fox, on Big Fox. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Yep. And we will take our next question from my straight of Fight TV. Hey, I got two questions. One for uh, Nate first, and then one for DJ. Nate, how do you characterize this fight? Um, you know, a lot of times people say, we'll, we'll characterize the DS brothers as people who, who don't really care about titles and belts. But how do you characterize this title fight for Nate Diaz? How do I characterize it? Yeah, how do you describe it? I mean, would you, would you, would you say that you've dreamt of this moment where you, you're fighting for the UFC belt, or is this just another fight for you? Well, yeah, it's a big fight. It's important and, uh, for the belt, so. But it's pretty much the biggest thing going on right now. Have you trained any differently for this fight than you do for every other fight, Nate? Um, no, I'm just trying to push out the best way I can. Uh, train hard with all my teammates and just being as ready as I can be. All right, thank you, Nate. Hey, DJ, uh, a lot of talk these days about super fights and being, you know, an elder statesman of the sport, somebody who's been around as long as you have. Do you think super fights are good or bad for the UFC? I think super fights are great. <clears throat> I think I think it causes a lot of hype, and Dana knows that. Dana knows that uh, super fights are. I want to the, the, look at the name. Look at the name itself, Super Fight. It, 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 it's awesome. It's uh, it's what this sport is about. It's what this sport was built on. Get the two best fighters in the world and put them in the ring. And and I gotta give it to Dana White. He has done that every time. He doesn't let no Mayweather Pacquiao situations ever happen. He's the man. Dana White, you're the man. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. I think we're good. I think we're good. And we will take our next question from Reed Ford Reed of SpockSports.com. This is a big question for Eric and Dana. Uh, I'm curious if you can measure uh, the impact uh, that this box contract has had one year in on the popularity of the UFC. That question for me? Uh, yes, and Eric, if I heard it from the as well. 
Well, obviously, in my opinion, being on you know one of the biggest networks in the world is huge. I mean, when you look at a company like Fox, Fox isn't just here in the United States. Fox is a, is a global media company, and you know Eric Chase is, is a uh, young, aggressive, smart guy uh, that we love to do business with. He's exactly our type of guy that we like to do business with, and. So, you know, I feel like we have a great relationship with this company, and we're all talking about uh, big, long-term projects, and, you know, the things that we're working on, the way that we do business, it's just, it's just absolutely impossible for this sport not to continue to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Do you have any idea what this will look like, this relationship in the future? I mean, are you expecting five or six fights a year, or is there, is there going to be more on, on big Fox? You no, know, I, I, I think, you know, we have four right now, which is, which is a good number. And, uh, you know, Fox, the UFC as a company continues to grow. We continue to try new things and do new things. And, and Fox Media Group is exactly the same. Uh, and uh, like I said, we've, I've been in the television business now for 13 years. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, like I always am, there's a lot of people in this business I can't stand. I can't stomach. Uh, and... It's hard to do business with a lot of these guys. We found the perfect partners. We love the relationship with these guys. We love this company. And like I said, this, this, is, this is a group of guys we want to be with forever. Yeah, look, I think from, from our standpoint, um, you know, we knew that uh, this relationship is, is going to grow and get bigger every year. Uh, you know, the first year was really to get... Uh, kind of the, the, the mainstream advertiser base uh, behind it and also promote the UFC with, um, you know, in the likes of NFL and Major League Baseball and college football and make it part of, you know, a big Fox Sports uh, portfolio. And we've done that. We've got over 100 major advertisers now. We've, we've introduced 15 new advertiser categories just in the last 12 months. So this is, this is exactly where we thought we would be, if not ahead. And, um, you know, with some of the things that, that we're talking about with, with Dana and Lorenzo, this, this relationship, you know, is going, to, is going to look different over the next, you know, two years, three years. Uh, and it's only going to get bigger because you're going to get much more economic support from the advertiser base behind it. And when that happens... Uh, you know, this thing is going to be, you know, one of the top sports in the U.S. on television. Even if you look at the ratings today, I mean, you, know, you look at college football over the weekend, how many games did above, you know, just take our last two fights, how many games, how many college football games did above a 1-5 last week? You know, UFC ranks right there in, in you know, uh, probably the, top 10 college football games of the weekend. Pretty amazing. And we will take our next question from Dave Meltzer of com. Yeah, this is for, um, I guess, for Eric and Dana both. I don't know that an announcement can be made, but is there any kind of a time frame as far as when an announcement is going to be made as far as what night Ultimate Fire is going to be on in January? Yeah, we're still working on it. Um, we're working on that with, with the guys at FX. So... You know, as soon as it's ready, we'll announce it. We're not ready yet. Okay. And as far as the the women go, um, is there any kind of a like? Can we expect that in the first quarter of next year, or or is is that even too vague to say? Um, uh, I, I don't know. Again, these these are all deals that are still being worked on, so I, I I'm not going to talk about them until they're done. Okay. It was a pain in my ass when I talk about stuff before they're done. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks very much. All right, just so you guys know, Shogun is on now. If anybody has any questions for Shogun? And we will take our next question from Corey Smith of MMANonStop.com. Hi, guys. Uh, my question is for Rory. Uh, recently, you said on UFC tonight that you wanted to fight more often. Um, is that more of a you want to fight kind of more quality over quant I mean quantity over quality or is it just something that you want to fight regardless of, of how that goes? 
wants to know everything about somebody. I really don't care. I mean, I mean, for all I know, BJ could completely have trained his, changed his training and like maybe he's a Muay Thai fighter now. Who knows? You know, I don't really care. I just, I just do. I just. I just get better as a fighter and as a martial artist, and I just react with it. I, don't, I really don't care about the past or, you know. I mean, he told me a few things that were interesting, but that's about it. Thanks. Yeah. And we will take our next question from Marisa Dejo of UOL. Hi, uh, I'd like to ask a question to Shogun. Uh, Shogun, do you think this, this fight leads you to, uh, to a title shot? If you win, do you think you can uh, step up and pass guys like uh, Mashida and Henderson? So I'm ready for this fight. 
and about the, the, the stuff so far, I think uh, the fight that everyone wants to see because both uh, look for the, 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 the lookout. We are strikers. I think the, the fans will have a wonderful show. And uh, let's see what's going to happen. Great, thank you. And we will take our next question from Mike Chapetta of MMAfighting.com. And the first question from BJ Pen Penley. BJ, uh, you, you obviously you draw a lot of different reactions from, from fans and from people who watch. You have a very loyal fan base, people who believe in you. You also have people who doubt what you can do at this stage of your career. And I guess there's sort of a consensus that we don't really know what to expect from you after a little bit of time off. What do you expect out of yourself on December 8th? Uh, I, I, I really expect a lot of, out of myself on December 8th. Uh, I got back together with uh, my old trainer that trained me for the Jens Pulver, Joe Stevenson, and Sean Shirk fight. Uh, we took my belly off. Uh, I think the, the best thing for me was uh, the fight getting postponed and pushed back. Uh, I, I actually, I started this training camp at probably 40% body fat, and I was just going to get into shape a little, go there, and and I uh, gave it my best effort. Uh, but uh, as, as things started going on, uh, Rory ended up uh, pulling out 10 weeks before the last fight, and uh, he was saying that he saw me, I looked sad, and a bunch of different things that he'll, he'll probably end up killing me in the ring. That, that really lit a fire under my butt, and and I think uh, I'm, I'm down under 10% now, and I'm ready to go. I, 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 I'm expecting the best BJ Penn that, that I've ever seen. So uh, we'll just see. We'll just see how this all plays out. Do you feel like you needed someone to light a fire under you, that you needed some sort of challenge to come from somebody like this, whether it was just those sorts of words or whatever? And, and if so, why? Why did you need that to kind of get yourself going again? Uh, fighting, it's still not a sport for me. Uh, I don't know if I should be saying that on a conference call. Fighting is still a fight for me. It has always been. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a great athlete that can play any sport. I, I you know, I, I, I can't do much, uh, do much different sports. But one thing I could always do, I could always, I could always, uh, I could always fight back. And uh, you know, with, with that said, you know, I, I go into the fight. Uh, you know, this is a fight. This isn't putting uh, baskets in a hole, a ball in a hole. This has always been a fight for me, and uh, you know, I just love it when it's that when it's that way. I love it when uh, when my opponent says that uh, says he's fat, I'll end up killing him. You know, he's nothing, this and that, and it's just all oh, wonderful. I couldn't ask for anything more. So do you feel like you sort of got your your old mentality back in the sense of, of you know someone kind of challenging you, you needing to step up? I, I never lost my old mentality. Actually, I think I, I think. Uh, Years I, I, I lost uh, guys to, uh, to prepare properly, but uh, I won't be able to do this for the rest of my life, and, and I want to give it a couple good. Uh, I want to give it a good shot, you know, uh, with this uh, with this fight coming up. And uh, you mentioned you know the super fights before and how good they were for the sport. Uh, when you fought George in the super fight, you were obviously the smaller man in that fight. Um, even though George is a smaller man, do you think that he sort of owes it to the sport to take the fight against Anderson? That, that, that fight, that's on George himself, but everybody on this phone call knows what he's doing. I'm sorry, you said everybody on the phone call knows what BJ would do? Yeah, you know what I would do if Dana called me and said to fight the champion above? You know what I would do. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. I have one question for Nate, if I can. Um, Nate, you know, having fought for, for a while and being part of the camp that you've been uh, involved in a lot of high-profile fights, I mean, for you personally, what would it mean to you to win and become a UFC champion? Oh, uh, that question for me? Yes. Uh, I think it's good because my my whole team is going to be champion. Or somewhere down the line. I think, I don't know, maybe it's my turn. It's not my turn. Uh, I represent my team. Okay, thank you guys. I appreciate that. And we will take our next question from Stephen from the Okay, is Alexander still on the line? 
No, he, he's not on the line. We got Shogun. Oh, okay. Um, uh, well, I, I guess I'll go to you, Dan, uh, and maybe people can uh, let you a little bit more. I know you're hesitant to give out a, uh, a solid cover, but you can see the uh, performance that uh, USB 134. Can you say whether it was over 500,000 or under 500,000 pay per view buys for the event? <laughs> It was a good show. The King of Pay Per View is back. Let's put it that way. All right. Just thought I'd give it a shot. Um, what would you consider a rating win for uh, UFC on Fox 5? The last uh, show did 2.4. What would you consider a rating win? Uh, that's an Eric Shanks question. Okay. Yeah, we don't do uh, as much as we would love to, and it's fun. We don't do uh, ratings, you know, we don't do ratings projections. It's. Uh, it's not a game that we like to play. Uh, what I will tell you is that uh, you know the demographic makeup, no matter what the rating, uh, the demographic makeup of these fights is off the charts, uh, and this one will be as well. Do you anticipate there will still be four UFC uh, four big box events for next year? Yeah, I think between Dana and us, you know, we like the idea of four big fights a year. I think it fits well with all the other UFC programming, both on Fox and uh, you know, and what they what they have to do on on pay per view. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Thank you. And we will take our next question from Kara Bryant of Evan Hey, everybody. Um, did you just said Alex is not on the call yet? He didn't get it on, right? Uh, we, we tried to get him, but we couldn't find him. Okay, all right, thanks. Well, then, um, my question is for VJ, and I maybe you touched on this a little bit, but just that I wonder how much you think about your legacy. I know you wouldn't fight anybody at any time, basically what, what you're just saying about it being a call for you to fight the next champ up. I'm just curious, people speak of you in such high regard, and I wonder if that even factors into what you do and the decisions you make. You know, I'm just curious how, how you respond to all that adoration you get from the fans. You know what? You know what? I actually uh, texted Dana a couple months ago, and I told Dana, I said, Dana, I, I watch all these interviews and all these people talking, and no one says my name when they talk about the greatest fighters anymore. And I really don't like that. It really bothers me. And uh, and and I know it's my fault. I, I know I'm the reason why why people don't talk about me when when they talk about GSP or Anderson Silva. My name was always in the mix. It's just never in the mix anymore. And I told Dana I got a real problem with that. And, and that was actually a big part of my motivation to come back and strong and, and then do a good fight here on December 8th. But as far as you talking about people saying they admire me and, and different things, you know, I, 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 you know, I want to thank all those people. Even, even Benson Henderson always comes up and, and praises me for what I've done over the years and, you know, gives me kind words. But, but uh, everything is current. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a glass half empty kind of guy. Everything is, is current and... I don't want. I don't want to just be known. Oh, he was good back in the day. I want to be known as as one of the best. Also, with that said, you know, I don't want to sit here and, and sound like I, I want more admiration because you just said a lot of people admire me, but I, but I still think I have I have some less to accomplish. Okay, great, very well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. All right, and we will go next to Votore of Sports Period. Hi, uh, hey. Well, you left the ultimate fighter room on the finale, and when you, uh, you said you didn't recommend uh, staying in the house, and uh, you didn't seem to enjoy it there, uh, what would you say to someone uh, who was considering going on the show today? Would you recommend it today? I think that if you're not in the UFC already, it's definitely a good first day uh, the way you go about it. But uh, as far as not recommending it, I don't mean like I'm not like sitting in a damn house and just just being good. They got fired. And um, no, yeah, the the ultimate fight house and yeah. Okay, great. And uh, for for Ben, uh, is uh, is Mister Harris still in the call? Fight of the night, fight of the night, fight of the night. Um, and USC Lightweight Championship, which a lot of great fighters have held, 
And I think, you know, we've been going through about 50 minutes of this conference call, you've had, I think, one question. Uh, what, what do you think you need to do to get the media to pay more attention to you? Uh, I don't think I really need to do a whole lot. I think I just need to continue doing what I'm doing. It, it's all a process. Life is a process. You want to, you know, raise good kids, it doesn't happen in one day. You want to be a great fighter, it doesn't happen overnight. You want to be, a, a, you know, the best MMA promoter in the history of all MMA promoters. You want to build your company up. You don't build your company up. You don't buy a company and then build it up out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, it's the biggest organization ever. It takes time. It, you know, you got to lay the groundwork, uh, stay on that grind, stay at it. Uh, and eventually, you know, you get those big, huge national deals with the national um, the TV stations that are seen worldwide. Uh, but it's just a matter of staying on the grind. I uh, keep doing what I'm doing. And eventually, if I uh, keep on winning and keep putting the work in, then everybody else is uh, following the place. Uh, so I, I can't try to be too worried about, kind of think about too much, but just uh, stay plugged away, you know? Uh, uh, I got big shoes to fill. I find George Jordan one of the great flyweights of all time. I, I have huge shoes to fill. Uh, and, you know, I'm excited to, to get that chance. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. We'll take one more question. And that question will come from Ariel Hawani on the internet. Thank you. Just had two quick follows for Eric Shank. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, Ariel. Hey, Eric. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you can comment on, uh, obviously you didn't want to comment about the, the, the reports about the channel, but there was also a report about because Fox will have the Super Bowl next year and Metal Lions and whatnot, if uh, UFC and Fox want to put a show that weekend. Is there anything you can comment on uh, as far as that is concerned? Look, I mean, the short answer is we would love to. We think that that, that Super Bowl week uh, in New York is going to be unlike anything else. And we're going we're gonna to own the city. Uh, we're going to own that week of sports television. And there's nothing better we can think of than, than a big fight that week. Uh, so, you know, we're talking to, to Dana Lorenzo about that. Um, love for it to happen. We're going to see if they can, you know, uh, if they can put it together, uh, you know, we're trying to convince them to fight, you know, outside uh, in February in the Octagon will be sent half. Oh, wow. So you, you, uh, you want this to go next to Okay. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wow. That's incredible. Um, the fighters on the call this one. I'm not fighting that week. <laughs> and then just one more. Uh, the prelims for this call, uh, for this card, excuse me, is uh, they're going to air on FX uh, after the Facebook prelims. That's the first time um, in the past, they've been on fuel. Will that be the norm for all the big Fox shows now? Yeah, we, we think so. Uh, you know, the thinking there is obviously FX is in a lot more homes than fuel. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's a funnel. The more people you have watching the prelims and telling them where to catch the fight, uh, the bigger the fight's going to be. And, uh, you know, we, we wanted to do it with this one and get that funnel uh, as big as possible. Thank you. Sure. Guys, I want to thank all the media for calling in today. I'm going to hand it over to Dave Schaller. He's going to run through some things you guys might want to know. And thanks to all the fighters for calling in today. And Eric, thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, and again, thanks to uh, all the participants on today's call. Just wanted to run through the UFC on Fox media schedule next week. It is loaded in Seattle for our sold-out event at Key Arena. It kicks off Wednesday. Uh, we'll have open workouts at the Grand High in Seattle. It will be in the Medellin Ballroom. Uh, all eight of the competitors who will be featured on the main card will be participating. That kicks off at 12.30. Media check-in will be at 11.30 all-time Pacific. On Thursday, we'll have our UFC on Fox press conference. That'll be at the Seattle Center Pavilion, which is actually on the campus of the Key Arena. Uh, all of the main car participants will be there, hosted by Dana White. That starts at 12 o'clock. And as you know, on Friday, we go right to the weigh-ins at Key Arena. I can confirm for you guys today, UFC flyweight champion Demetrius Johnson will be the Q&A uh, featured guest. That will be a 2 o'clock fighter on the scale at 4. As Dana mentioned, go to the Octagon this Sunday. And we have tickets on sale for our next Fox event this Friday in Chicago, as well as tickets on sale for UFC 156 Aldo versus Edgar on Friday. Thanks to Benson, Nate, Shoda, BJ, Larry, Mr. Shanks, and Dana. And we will see you guys next week in Seattle. And this does conclude today's conference. Thanks, and we would like to thank everyone for your participation. And have a wonderful day.